Hi guys, this is section 10.3, which is solving quadratic equations using square roots. Um, there's five different ways to solve a quadratic equation. Um, I'll cover those after. Some things you need to know before. Standard form. Um, you need to put it into standard form in order to solve a quadratic equation. Uh, you guys probably remember the ax squared plus bx plus c, but what you need to know is you need to make it equal to zero. Okay, make the quadratic equation equal to zero. If there's a number on this side, you got to minus it or plus it off over to the C to make it equal to zero. That's standard form. Your solutions can also be called x-intercepts, roots, or zeros. So they're interchangeable. So if I ask for what's the x-intercepts, that's the same as asking for the solutions. Okay, or if I ask for the roots, that's the same thing. When you graph a quadratic equation, it's going to be a parabola. Uh, we are going to skip that part. High school said we don't need to do that. So when we graph a quadratic equation, you're going to get a parabola. The solutions are where it crosses the x-axis. So we're looking for the x-intercepts. I know with linear equations, we focus on the y-intercept. But um, for quadratics, we focus on the x-intercepts. Okay, when we solve, what you need to know for graphing, we are going to skip graphing, but what, there's a few things you do need to know. Number one, if your parabola crosses the x-axis twice, you have two x-intercepts, you're going to have two solutions to that equation. Okay, If it only hits the x-axis and bounces off, you're going to have one x-intercept, which is where it hits that x-intercept, or the x-axis, and you're going to have one solution. It can be over here as well, so or going down. Okay, I'm just, I know all my examples went up, but it can be a parabola that goes downwards as long as it just hits the axis and that's the one solution. If it never hits the x-axis, like that green line there um, on the right, you will have no x-intercepts, no so. Okay. It could be a downward parabola that goes like this. And again, it never hits the x-axis, so that has no so as well. So that's just the things you need, simple things you need to know as far as solve by graphing, how many solutions you're going to have. Okay, today's lesson is going to be 10.3, which is using square roots. You're going to have a quadratic equation, but there's no middle term. There's no bx. If you notice, there's just the ax squared and then the plus c equals zero, or minus c in this case. So there's no bx. If there's no b or middle term, you can solve using square roots, and I'll show you how to do that next. The next um, lesson I'll do, which is 10.4, is going to be by factoring. So you remember how we did all this factoring. You set it equal to zero, and I'll show you how to solve that. Uh, we are going to skip completing the square, which is 10.5. Um, high school said we don't need that. And then I will teach you guys the quadratic formula. That's going to be very important in 10.6. So you will learn three out of the five ways to solve quadratic equations. Okay, so today we're going to focus on this red one, which is number two using square roots. So here's my examples here. Um, you can see I did do a graph, but I just want to again show you just quickly what that what that means. And I'll turn off the light. Sorry. If you have x squared minus thirty six equals zero, and you want to solve, all you do is move solve for the x, move the thirty six over, like we do a normal equation, cross that out and I get x squared is equal to 36. In order to get x by itself, I need to take the square root of both sides. And when you take the square root, I'm finding what is the square root of 36? And most people would just put six. But the answer is actually, what times itself would equal to 36? Six times itself would equal to 36, but negative six will also equal to 36. So your answer would be plus or minus six. So whenever you're finding, um, what equals square root, I'm sorry, square root of x squared is equal to square root of 36. It's going to be plus or minus 6. What that means graphically, and again, we're going to skip this part so, so you can see it. it would, your parabola would cross the x-axis at negative 6 and positive 6. And don't worry about where the y-intercept is, but I just want to show you quickly graphically. That's what it would mean. Your two Solutions are 6 and negative 6. Your x-intercepts, which is also your solutions, or your roots, 
R6 and negative 6. Okay, you don't need to do this. That's just kind of showing you visually what it would be. If I have another problem that looks like this, I need to isolate the x. So I'm going to plus 27 to both sides. Get rid of that. And I'm going to get 3x squared is equal to 27. I want x by itself. So I'm going to divide by 3 to get rid of this. And then I get x squared is equal to 9. And when I take the square root of 9, x is going to equal to plus or minus 3. And again, don't forget that plus or minus. So I have two roots. Here's a quick example here. I need to minus 4 from both sides. And when I do this, I get x squared is equal to negative 4. When I take the square root of this, what times itself will ever equal to negative 4? And if you say 2, no, because 2 times 2 is 4. If you say negative 2, that's not correct either, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So the answer here would be no so. If you ever come up to x squared equals to a negative number, you don't even need to square root it. It would become no so. Okay, But be careful that this, this x is positive. If it, was neg if it happened to be negative x, you could divide by the negative 1 and it would have a solution. Okay, so you can stop there and also, if you wanted to see what it meant graphically, it would mean that it would never hit the x-axis. Okay, because there's no so, there's no x-intercepts. That's how you're going to solve those. Here's one quick word problem for you guys. That is on the um, homework. So if the area of a square is 81 meters square, so if I'm saying my area is equal to 81 meters squared, what is the length of a side? And all that's going to be is side squared or x squared is equal to 81. When I take the square root of it, x is equal to plus or minus 9. Okay, But you cannot have the length, negative length, so your length is only going to be 9 meters. The negative one just drops off because you're never going to have a negative length. Okay, that is 8 point, I'm sorry, that is section 10.3, and I'll do 10.4 next for you guys. Take care.